So we'll have a look at the general network editing overview of the selection modes and so forth. We'll have a look at network editing workflow or the general flow of your interactive network editing in Visum. Then we'll follow that up with a couple of network editing exercises, which would be common to some of your work for building scenarios for roadway and transit networks. And then we'll share some network troubleshooting trip, uh, tips as well as uh, give you an example of network expression calculators and such. So let's have a look at first the network editing overview. In overview, uh, in Visum, networks can be edited by activating one of two modes. One is the edit mode. And this is used to modify existing network objects. For example, if you have already links in your network or turns and zones, uh, you can basically look at the edit mode and then double click interactively and edit the properties of existing network objects. For example, changing number of lanes, changing speeds, changing other attributes like functional classification, link types and such. Then the second mode is the create mode. This is more of a mode that you use when you're adding new uh, network objects into Visum. So for example, if you're doing a build out scenario for the future or new roadway builds, you would basically use this create mode and insert new links in the network using this insert mode. The network object selection in Visum works in uh, three different ways. One is your usual single select, where you go into the edit mode, point and click a single item in a selected network or an object layer. This could be links, nodes, stop points, and so forth. Then there's the multiple selection mode, where you can basically select multiple objects in the network by holding the control key down and just going over the network editor and selecting various objects in the network. The third one is a spatial selection. This is a freehand polygon or territory selection where you can draw a polygon interactively and select all of the objects within a polygon. The overall network editing workflow in Visum is as follows. First, we select the required network object and layer to edit. So for example, we have this network box over here if we wanted to edit links, we would select the links over here. Then we'll select create or edit mode based on what we are trying to do. For example, if you want to edit existing links, then we would select the edit mode, else we'll select the create mode. And then next comes just the point and click network operation where we can add new network objects, edit or modify existing network objects and so forth. So this is the overall network editing workflow and it works pretty much the same way for all the objects. Now let's do a network editing exercise in Visum. Here what we'll do is modify properties of a link by creating a new link and then set properties for that new link and then close an existing link for all modes, select link, look at the impact of changing and removing transport system on the link and such. Then we'll also look at editing a group of links in Visum. So let's say you're modifying an entire corridor. How does that workflow look like and such? All right, let's go to Visum and look at how these operations and functionalities work. Here's my base map and network. Over here, these are the network layers that we talked about. So the workflow typically is to select your required layer. For example, if you want to edit links, you select links. Then your edit mode over here is edit, and then point and click in the network. If you double click, you will see a dialog pop up, and then you can modify the properties of each link as you go. The other selection mode that we discussed is the multiple selection. So let's say I wanted to select this whole corridor over here. I'd again go back to links, 
click on a link, hold control, and then continue clicking forward on all of these links. So this way, you can edit an entire corridor or select an entire corridor for editing. Then comes the spatial selection mode. Here, if you wanted to draw a polygon and select an entire area for editing, you can do that, complete the polygon. So you can see now that this area within the polygon is selected. Now you can simply go to the network object that you want to modify and change its properties by going to this multi-edit mode. To select all of this back, then you can select the entire network and move back to the single edit mode. Now let's have a look at a specific exercise where we block a link for transport systems so there's no routing over it. And then we also add another link uh, that's missing in the network. So I'm gonna go to my line editing or link editing focus. So over here, I'm gonna add a link and then remove an existing uh, network link over here, this whole corridor, and block it for traversal. So let's see if we can get the background to show up over here. All right, so let's continue now with changing the properties of these links and then blocking this for the transport system and then adding another network link going from here, connecting over here. So we kind of create a by bypass-like situation to directly connect this link over here. Let me move this up over here. Now the workflow goes as follows. I select links, click the edit mode, and then we want to block this entire corridor. So I click control and select all of these links to block over here. And now what I want to do is remove the modes from these links that are allowed. So here we can see that the transport system is set to SOV and shared write two and three. So in this case, what we want to do is remove these. You can either change that in the quick view editor over here directly, or with this selection, you can hit enter and that will bring up the multi-edit links view. Now over here, I want to select the target as the TSYS set, which is the mode prohibition. Click OK. Go to constant. And I make my selection over here with what I would like to do with these. So here I'm going to close it to SOVs, SR2 and SR3. And then you can now see that instead of a bold red, it's a light red. And that closes this entire corridor to the traversal. Now let's say we want to build a new link that goes from point here back into this corridor. We have the same workflow, but with the insert mode. So we have links selected, and then we have insert mode selected and then we want to go from node to node to add these this new link so let me click these nodes so we can see nodes clearly so from here i'm going to add a new link going from this point 
to this point with some polyline shape. So I started this node, left click, and put my poly points in place. And then at the destination node, again, I left click. Then this option over here lets you pick a link type. And a link type table is essentially a lookup table that automatically associates certain properties with the link. We'll have a look at this link type table shortly here. So here, I just keep it as link type one. If you want to create only a one directional link, then you can select this close opposite direction option, and that's gonna close the opposite direction. So this is going to be then only a one-way link. If you want to edit more details simultaneously, you can also click this details tab and then allow or block any of the transport systems and enter properties for the links as needed. Here, let's change some of the transport systems and use only the SOV and shared ride modes and then click OK. Now you can see over here that this is highlighted in yellow. What this means is the properties in the two different directions back and forth are different. So if you want to make the properties uniform, then you can go and click transfer changes to opposite direction, and that will make the properties of the link uniform in both of the directions. Now let's say I wanted to give this more proper speed of let's say 40 miles per hour and then the opposite also gets 40 miles per hour these capacity lookups will allocate using this link type that we'll discuss here shortly and once you're done with your edit over here you can simply click ok and that inserts a link over here so now you can see that your network has a new link and if you double click this link, you'll see that the properties are as we said earlier. Now let's quickly look at the link type allocation. Over here we go for list, network, link types. And here you can see that this is a big lookup table which has certain predefined capacities as well as speeds and then various different max and min speeds for different modes. So let's say you have a bike mode over here, you can constrain that to a maximum speed of 10 MPH, and then this overrides the calculation of the free flow speed that you may specify for other general vehicles. This can also have user-defined attributes. So for example, you have your values for the congestion factor, functional type, U-road factor, and so forth. You can use this also as the lookup over here and insert these lookups into this table. Now this link type lookup is then available through the indirect attributes in the links, which you can use to populate the link properties automatically using the formula editor. And we'll have a look at one of these examples as we go further down in this exercise. To give you an overview, this is how the indirect attributes are linked with the link. Take a look over here. You have the link type, and this gives you access to all of the different properties that you can then pull in and populate in this using a formula edit. So this is essentially our link ins insertion exercise. Similarly, we have the transit side of the network. So let's have a look at our PowerPoint again and discuss the transit side of the network editing. So some of the basics for transit editing. Vizum allows a detailed microcoding of stops. We have three levels over here. One is a stop point, which is the most basic entity. And this essentially corresponds to the boarding location. This may be on either a node 
or a link with a linear reference and over a link it may be serving one direction or both directions. After that comes the stop area and the stop area represents one or more stop points. So let's say you have two stop points on either side of the road. Those can be grouped into one stop area so that your access node just needs to be connected to a stop area node and then the stop points will be automatically accessible in both directions. Then comes the stop and a stop essentially is a group of stop areas. Typically in Visum, uh, when we use this layer or order hierarchy, what we are trying to do is model something like this diagram over here. So you may have a transfer station, let's say for the buses, and you have different bus bays, and you want to group these different bus bays and line serving each bus bay in a different stop point, stop area, and stop configuration. You can do that. Or if you have a multimodal hub, which has different lines coming through it, for example, a bus line may be serving another metro station and so forth. In that case, you could use a stop grouping and group those stop areas serving the metro lines or subway lines and then the bus lines in two different groups and connect them through this abstract stop by directly defining the transfer matrix. And essentially what this does is it speeds up the process of assignment because then it's possible to constrain the number of transfer opportunities that are explored during the path search. For the most part in sparse networks that you might see in Florida for transit, all these three elements will be basically like a hamburger. So they will be one-to-one -one corresponding to each other. And this config configuration for stop, stop area, stop point may not be that frequently used in networks that you have in Florida unless you have a rail junction which uh, intersects with a bus line and so forth. Then transit lines in Visum also follow a hierarchy. We have the vehicle journey. This is the trip or the run made by the vehicle. This is only applicable if you're working with a timetable based assignment or a schedule based assignment or if you're doing some work which requires a Google Transit Feed or General Transit Feed export. So to export the GTFS, you need the trips for the GTFS files and the vehicle journey gives you basically that data. Then we have the time profile. The time profile essentially defines the running time of the line. This is used as another additional entity along with the line route course because sometimes you may have the same line route course, but different stop profiles on the line. So one may be an express bus versus the regular service, and the express bus might be faster, or it might stop at fewer places compared to the standard bus. So that way, to basically decide, define two time profiles on the same line route to capture that variation. Then the line route is the actual route course. So this is a directed attribute. So this way you define the shape of that transit line using the line route container. And the line is the overall container which does not have a direction but it holds the line route course and all of the entities that belong to the line route course. So let's say you have an orange line, red line, in the network and then there are different directions of that line which are represented by the line route. The line will be the overall container for that. And this hierarchical structure essentially lets you generate different summaries at different levels of detail. The pyramid for this looks like this and as you can see the aggregation level goes up from the vehicle journey to time profile to line route to line and then you can also define a group of lines called main line. Now to add a PUT line or a transit line in Visum, the following steps are typically involved. 
we can add a new transit line with a predefined headway. This would be the most typical case for use in headway-based assignment. So we first create any new transit stops that are planned. And if there are no new transit stops planned and the line route course is to run just over existing stops, then this stop won't be necessary. Then we define the line container or the route ID applicable to the transport system. Then we draw the line route course. And then if we are to insert vehicle journeys, for example, if you're trying to do more work with, let's say, FTA stops and you want the detailed timetable in there, you'd basically insert vehicle journeys. This can be done either using the regular services or constant headways, or if you want to add in bulk vehicle journeys, we also have a tool that allows vehicle journey creation using certain headway attributes. We'll have a look at all of these by doing an exercise in Visum next. Let's go back to Visum. Let me bring up my line editing focus. So this is an existing network in the model right now. You can see these real little triangular dots that show stop points and then all of these different line route courses specified over here. Now what we want to do is extend a certain line and create a new connection between these two and call it a new line route. So let's go and focus on that area. So here we want to do a very simple edit to keep things quite clear with how line root editing works in Visum. We'd like to create a line and line root that captured this particular corridor. So this way you'll extend the reach of transit and have a service corridor all the way across. So first thing, if we have new stops or stop points planned, we'll add those. We'll have a look at how to add stop points on both on node as well as link. This way you have an idea of how both of these type of stop points will work. So let's go and select stop points over here. Let's go to the create or insert mode. Now one stop point I can define over here on the node. Let me bring up the nodes view. So we can put a stop point right here on the node. So this is a node-based stop point. Let's take a look at the properties of that stop point. Go back to the edit mode and double click the stop point. And this will show you that there's a stop area and stop already allocated to it. So by default, what Bezoom will do is create a stop and stop area automatically as you generate that stop point. And these can be shown in the layered view over here. So you have the stop, stop area, and then the stop point underneath it. Usually if your line or transit line is fairly sparse, this is pretty much all you need to do to code the stop point. So this stop point is on the node. Now next, let's take a look at an example where the stop point is not on a node, but it's on a link. So again, I have stop point selected over here. Then I select the insert mode. Now I'd like to insert a stop point on this link in one direction. So if I select, if I keep my cursor below over here, you can see that it highlights the direction of travel. So in this case, I'm going eastbound. So let's say I want to put the stop as an eastbound stop. I can just select and click. And now you can see that 
this stop point only serves that one direction. Now let's take a closer look at that stop point over here. You can see over here that it specifies the link that the stop point sits on, the reference node that it looks at for the stop area and stop, and then also a linear reference. This linear reference is also synchronized with the stop location over here. So let's say you move this over here, that will automatically also adjust the location of the stop. So this can be changed for linear referencing. Over here, it's right in the middle, so I keep it over here. If this stop point belong to another stop area, let's say you're trying to create it as part of a group, then you can select change stop area and allocate any new stop area or existing stop area that this stop point might belong to. And then it becomes part of a grouped stop area stop hierarchy. Now let's say if you wanted to move this stop point and make it serve both directions, then you can simply have your edit mode selected select the stop point and move it across and then drop it and make it a bi-directional stop point. So this way it's possible to change the directionality of that stop by interactive editing. I'm going to bring back this stop point to serve this direction. So now that we have these two new stop points, let's create our line route. So to create the line route, first I will create a line container. So I go back to now lines, select the insert or create mode. I'm going to say create a new line over here. And then you can click anywhere in the network view and it'll bring up this create line dialog box. Here you can enter your line name. Let's say I want to call this new line and then select the transport system it belongs to. You can have it as all bus, bus or project bus. For operational planning, we also have these vehicle combination fields over here and the operator fields. However, we are not dealing with the operational planning over here, so these can be left as they are. Then I click OK. That creates the line container over here. Next, we want to add that line root course. So now we select again, we have the create mode on and then line route, again select anywhere in the network. So we see that we want this line, new line, and then we want the eastbound direction. So I'm going to call it NL EB. And then click OK. So once you commit that, you can then start interactively inserting this line root course. So we are going to go from this stop point all the way to this stop point to complete this entire connection so that these two islands are then connected by this new line service. Now in parameters over here, you can select which links should be used for routing this line route. If you don't have the transport systems or buses predefined on certain links, you can select this use also close links and then it lets you just drag over as is instead of blocking the access and finding another loop around the allowable links. So now from here I start with this stop point and I can just simply rubber band through this selection 
and then I can go again, extend this line further. And when this is done, I can click OK to commit this change. Let's say you wanted a different root course for this. Then what you can do is freeze two points and then draw a different root course between those two points. So let's say I wanted this to loop around and come back. So at that point, you can freeze this over here by clicking that stop point and then freeze this over here and then drag and change how the root course runs. So this will bring it around or let's say you want it to go all the way over here. Then you can bring it around like this. So there are these different utilities that are available to selectively change the course of your line root within a certain defined box. I'm going to say undo and again undo and keep the original course and then click OK. Now when you click OK since this is a whole integrated network and all the line routes are snapped over the links, a message will be issued for all of the links and turns that have to be now open for this bus transport system and that way the network consistency is maintained. So we say yes, and that inserts the new line root over here. Now let's go back to the edit mode and select this line root, and you can see that the new line root is created. Now if we double click this line root, you'll see that the running time and so forth are not initialized right now, so it's all zero. But this is what defines the stopping profile as well as the running time of this line root. We'll have a look at how to set this in bulk a little bit further down in this exercises. So this is a general overview of adding and inserting line routes in Vizum. The other aspect for the line route that you would end up adding is also the headway. And this is entered on the time profile. So if you go for lists, network, or beauty supply network, lines, and time profiles, in this listing, we have two user-defined fields for defining the headway in seconds. So if we wanted a headway of, let's say, 1,800 seconds over here and 1,800 over here, we can add this to the user-defined headway field. Now, these two fields can also be used for generating regular services or vehicle journeys. Let's have a look at how we can do that. So again, I have my line selected. I select the line route over here. And then I can go for the tabular timetable view. Now here, there are no vehicle journeys in the network at present. So if I wanted to add few regular services, then I can go for create vehicle journey, regular services, and then check this box over here. You can define the period within which the headway is to start and end. So let's say we are looking at period from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. with a 15 minute frequency. This will auto-generate these vehicle runs over here between that time period. And then we just click OK over here to insert these vehicle journeys within the network. The other way of adding vehicle journeys in the network is by using the vehicle journey tool. So if you know 
a general headway that you want to use for the vehicle journey, you can create regular services and then that will auto generate all of the vehicle journeys in your network. Let's have a look at how you can do that. You can go for scripts, add in, and then PUT, and use the create regular timetable tool. Over here, you can see again similar parameters. There's a start time, and then there's also an end time. Then you can either add a constant headway over here, or this headway may be based on an attribute. So let's say my start time over here is now seven, end time is nine, but instead of a 30 minute regular headway, I want an attribute to reflect that headway. I can click attribute and then over here in the headway field, I can select one of the fields that defines the headway. Click OK. And if you want to remove existing vehicle journeys, you can select late existing vehicle journeys. If you wanted different time periods with different headways, you can create multiple lines over here and insert different time periods with the corresponding headways and that will generate vehicle journeys at different intervals. In this case, we just want to generate a few vehicle journeys for the AM period. So we select this, we select our field, and then we click OK. And now you can see over here in the timetable editor again that a bunch of vehicle journeys or vehicle runs have been created. So let's have a look at one of these in the timetable editor. So this is the tabular view. And if you want to have a look at the timetable or the line view, we can go for this. And then in the timetable, we can have a look at the graphical view. So this shows us how to insert a vehicle journey in the network. So let's say you don't have the exact timetable, but you have an idea of the headway you will be running for the new planned line, you can still generate a synthetic timetable for it by specifying a regular interval headway like this. So these are all of our network edits. One note about all of the network editing in Visum is that everything is stored in this undo stack. So all of the options that you want to undo or redo, these are all fully stored in this stack. The size of the stack can also be controlled by going to the edit user preferences and then various options over here which give you the command history for redo and undo active and then the number of operations for that undo redo operation you want to store so let's say you were doing a pretty large PIP coding or edit, then you'd basically have, let's say, more entries in this undo redo stack so that you have more access to changing things or undoing things that you didn't intend to commit into the network. So, with this, what we are going to do now is transfer all of these edits into a transfer file which can then be applied on the fly if you're doing a batch run of the base and build scenario. So the parameters for that would be like this. We'll use the base version file and then use the existing loaded network as that target state 
and then push all of that into a transfer file. The other option is you can save this file as is, as a separate version file to work with, in which case I go over here and then instead of base, I can say build and then save. So this saves the entire version file with all its data in a completely new version file. But if you want to store only the edits and then apply that as part of a scenario management framework, you can go for file, compare and transfer networks, and say create model transfer. You can say version for base file is that file name base and then we say use currently loaded network as the target state. We click OK over here. We'll call this our transfer file and then hit save. And this then generates our transfer file. So one of the nicer features with the transfer file is that you can actually look at all of the edits that came through and then apply the required edits. So over here, it'll show you all of the things that it added or removed in the process of generating that transfer file. So for lines, you can see that we added one line, this new line. Then for the stop areas and stop points, you can see that we modified a couple of objects and then we also added these two new stop points. Similarly with links, we added those two new links over there, modified a bunch of links in that group. So this way, a whole series of edits is stored in this transfer file. Let's take a look at what that transfer file or where that transfer file is. So this is your transfer file that was saved from this editing exercise. Again, like we saw last time, this is essentially a file that you can open in a network editor and take a look. So this way you can have this file stored in your network as a build file and then apply this transfer file through the interface for compare and transfer networks. Another aspect of changing properties is the multi-edit feature or corridor editing if you'd like. In this case, if you want to, let's say, change the number of lanes of an entire corridor, that can be done by, again, the same sort of point and click editing. Let's have a quick look. I have my classified view for the lanes. So right now, all of these are basically the same number of lanes. If I wanted an entire corridor to change over here, again, I go back to links, edit mode, and then hold control and select an entire corridor over here. And then hit enter. I want to change lanes over here. So I point it to number of lanes. And then let's say I want to make all of this three lanes. Then I click OK over here. Then close. And that will make this entire corridor three lane corridor. Now these same edits are also usable through the formula editor. We'll have a look at that one next. And in that case, what we'll first look at is an example of speed and capacity and number of lane update. And then we'll also look at the transit line running time update. So let's go back to Visum. And then I go to my procedure sequence over here. 
Here I have a few expressions already listed for network calculations. In the first one, I essentially have this edit attribute step. And what I'm doing is setting the number of lanes to this user defined attribute named IMPT lanes. So this is a simple transfer of attributes. Then there's a more indirect capacity calculation. So I have a certain link type capacity PRT and then I multiply that by the number of lanes to get the overall link capacity over here. This is another type of formula expression. Then let's say you want to project the land use data for a certain zone in place. Over here, let's say I want to project the industrial employment to 10 years or something using 2% growth rate. I can apply this type of formula and project that as well. Next, I can take a look at updating running time of the lines. And this is a special uh, calculation where first we set the running times on the link through an attribute calculation. So the bus running time over here is set to the length divided by a given speed assumption. Over here, I've just assumed 35 miles an hour and taken the length to calculate that running time. However, you can reference any other attribute. So let's say you have a speed defined for the transit line. You can reference that attribute through this attribute selection and use that as part of your formula. So let's run a few of these steps and see the outcome. So first I'm gonna update the number of lanes. So I single step through this. So once this runs through, you can see over here that all of my number of lanes are classified and the earlier edit that I had made is now overwritten by the new formula calculation. Then you can change the capacity on the links. You can project the industrial employment, update the bus running time, and then we come to this set dwell and run times. And this is a special calculation that can be used for updating the running time of all of the lines. So if I look at the parameters for this, what I'm doing is updating the time profile runtime to a given resolution and then using the attribute that I calculated in the previous section and updating the running time based on that. Click OK and then I'm gonna run this step. Now if I look at the time profiles, these would typically be updated once you have the running time corrected. Now let's have a look at the network again. Bring my base map up. With the addition of vehicle journeys, you can also take a look at the number of transit vehicles running over the links. For that, you can accumulate transit journeys over a link. So this way you will know how many transit vehicles are running over a link. And if you'd like to use that as preload, you can just simply count the vehicle journeys and place it on a link attribute. Now we come to a few network troubleshooting tips. We have a built-in network check tool in Visum. This can be used to run automated tests on various aspects of the network. So it kind of gives you an idea of um, some network coding that might not be correct or may need retention. Then we can also use the shortest path calculator to test our network for routing. So that way it helps you to fix your assignment or traffic assignment results, especially let's say you're building a new build case where you have a bypass built, but 
nothing is routing over it in the traffic assignments you can use the shortest path calculator to troubleshoot where the mode prohibitions or capacities or speeds might not be set correctly let's take a look at some of these calculations along with the skim calculations and how you can troubleshoot the network in this particular case so again i go back over here let me bring up my base map let's say now we can go for graphics and then shortest path search to run a shortest path search from point A to point B in Visum, we just go for the PRT, which is the road network, and then select either node zone. In this case, we'll try to run a node-based shortest path, and then select the transport system that you're using for the routing. I'm going to use this SOV over here, and then the criteria for routing. In this case, I'm just going to use let's say travel time or free flow travel time let me run the route calculation from here all the way to here so that gives me a path so let's say you built a corridor along this and this route was not completed in that case that would flag as a inconsistent coding or coding error let me show what happens if we remove a certain thesis or another property that isn't valid for the path calculation. So I double click over here. And let's say I set the speed of this link to zero. You can see that the route calculation diverts and comes back over here. So let's say you were coding this corridor, but somehow miscoded the speed. This kind of shortest path calculation will help you in troubleshooting that and looking at the network then you can focus on this area and then find out okay i need to adjust my speed over here and as soon as you fix the speed the route will again make sense the shortest path calculation for the transit in visum is applicable for the timetable based assignment so if you have a timetable sitting in the network behind then the shortest path search for PUT or transit works in the same way let's look at the line editing overview and over here if I go from stop area set a departure time and then one stop area to the next so if a path is broken, it gives you the warning that there is no path between these two. So this way, you can use the shortest path tools for troubleshooting your networks. Then there's also the skim calculation. So you can use these skim calculations to guess or try to troubleshoot path or OD pairs that have broken routes between them or are not connected. So here, let's say I run this SOV skim, and then this transit skim over here. This will produce an output, and you can analyze that output to see if the paths are broken. So now I go back to my matrices and open the skims. Here I have the travel time and distance skims. So if you look at the travel time skims and you see a bunch of inconsistent values over here or 999 type values, then you can say that the path is broken between two OD pairs. Typically in the PRT or road auto modes, these should not be broken where on the other hand if you have these transit modes a lot of these paths may not be completed because there is no transit access to those OD pairs so over here you can see the in vehicle time skim for transit 
there are a lot of 999s and that is because a lot of the transit network is inaccessible to a lot of zones so let's say you wanted to troubleshoot what is going on over here you can select this look at the od pair and you can see over here that this origin is quite a bit far away from the transit stop so it likely doesn't fit the walk access parameters and then there is no path from this zone to any of the other zones either so this way you can use the shortest path search and skimming in vizum to fix and check your networks lastly we have this bulk network check calculator which you can run through calculate and then network check you can select which attributes or which parts to run in this case let's say you wanted to check your network for zone connectors you can select that particular option and then run this calculation over here i see that the result is a green tick which means all of the zones are connected and there are no problems otherwise you would see the situation where it'll tell you which zones are incorrect for example if i select turns and run this again it might give you a bunch of warnings and uh, make you aware of the turns that seem inconsistent and then you can go for show go over the network and it will show you all of the turns in question that it is flagged as possibly inconsistent turns so this is the general overview of managing and coding networks in vizum and one note is that all of these operations that we discussed over here can also be automated using python scripting via the com interface so once you are an expert at coding and you want to start automating things you can experiment or use the com interface to then automate all of these steps or applying transfer files to automate the procedures for batch runs and so forth when you're actually running your models